Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-9. Our last episode featured Sister Elaine meeting with and getting the blessing of the High Bishop of Phoenix to go adventuring and spread the word of Dilo in that capacity. Her new associates discovered an easy job to pass the time while they waited. The task proved a bit more difficult than they expected and were stopped by the guards when they attempted to follow their quarry into the sewers below the city. We rejoin them as they explain to the cleric what the job is. A dog? Like a puppy dog? repeated the exasperated cleric. You want us to find a lost dog. Why in the heavens would you select that as a job? The group explained that they thought it would be an easy task and their reward was rather significant for the job. As the holy woman heard the details, she conceded that their logic seemed appropriate. She asked about the guards and the law was explained to her about entering the sewers. The group stood at the promenade and discussed their options when a smelly beggar came up shaking a cup asking for alms. Fargus retrieved two copper coins that he had with him and he dumped them into the metal container. The beggar thanked him profusely and then said, Do drop tavern. As the individual began to drag himself away, Lady Irena asked him what he had said. The beggar lifted his eye patch and looked around with two good eyes. Do drop tavern, milady. There is an unguarded entrance behind the business. You'll have to trek through the sewers a bit as it cuts across town, but you can retrieve your dog that way if the snakes don't get him first. Sister Elaine began to tell the beggar that the canine wasn't theirs, but was cut short by Cabe Silvertongue. Thank you, kind sir. May the gods shine upon you for helping us retrieve her beloved pet. As the man limped away, Cabe received a curt look from the cleric. The gaze was cut short as both Cabe and Fargus the ranger explained that the beggar didn't need to know about the reward. The group pondered the new information and decided to give the entrance a shot. They crossed the city of Phoenix and saw statues, fountains, and a variety of buildings of various sizes and grandeur. During the jaunt, Cabe asked Fargus and Elaine if they were good with the plan. Both confirmed that they felt the law prohibiting the sewer entrance was stupid and something that could be excused for the greater good, and the five gold crowns. As the group arrived at the Dewdrop Tavern, they found a quartet of guards hovering around the entrance, causing the party to stop short. The old beggar lied, stated an angry Welby O'Toole. His calm was restored when the tavern owner came out of, with a small cask of ale and gave it to the guards. The men-at-arms left quickly, hiding the liquor container underneath their tunics. Nice, a payoff, muttered the ranger. But at least that gets rid of them. Come on, let's go. Circling around the business, they discovered a heavy growth of bushes. Dead grass and lines led the adventurers into the brush where a bent sewer grate was quickly discovered. Everyone in? asked Fargus as he gripped the bars of the sewer cover. Lady Irena and Cabe Silvertongue looked around and nodded, indicating the coast was clear. The human ranger took several deep breaths in preparation to lift the heavy grate, but was extremely surprised as it opened with very little effort and was nearly silent in spite of the presence of rust. Welby leaned down and looked at the protective cover and noted that it was fake and made of wood, but painted to appear like metal. Confused, the group took no notice and began to climb down the iron rungs set in the stone wall of the sewer. One by one, each made it onto a damp pad and let their eyes grow accustomed to the light streaming in from the hole above. Looks like we came in at the far end, remarked Irena. We have several paths to choose from. She turned back to face the group and noticed that Welby, Fargus, and Sister Elaine were all squinting. Oh, my apologies, she continued. I forgot that your kind can't see in the dark. 
Cave was looking around at the underbelly of the city and spotted a stack of makeshift torches. Grabbing a few, he handed one to Fargus, who quickly ignited it using some flint and steel that he had in a belt pouch, while Cabe took the others and put them in his backpack. Light sprang from the torch and illuminated the area. The 20 by 20 foot chamber that they were in ran both south and east. Pondering their options, Sister Elaine asked if anyone had any guesses. The ensemble thought for a moment and Welby pointed south. The cleric asked him why and he just shrugged his shoulders. Well, the water's running that way and sooner or later it'll probably cut over to the east again anyway. The smell is awful, proclaimed Lady Irena as she held her nose and kicked a small rodent away from her. The group surveyed the area and they were in and noticed that the tunnels below the city were nearly 15 feet across with a one foot groove cut down the center where the sewage flowed south. Miscellaneous debris that had been washed over the groove covered the landscape, but a discernible trail through the sewer was easy to spot. As the group peered ahead into the darkness, Fargus asked Cabe Silvertongue if he could see anything, but he pointed out that his dark vision was being interfered with by the torchlight. Laughter was suddenly heard to the rear of the party. Whirling around, the group found Welby reading some disturbing graffiti related to the High Bishop etched upon the wall. Sister Elaine read the comment and was horrified. She moved around the group and attempted to rub off the paint with no success. Blasphemy, she exclaimed. Unimpressed, Fargus suggested that the group continue forward to find the dog so that they could get out of the cesspool. Small holes in the ceiling had been bored to allow water and small debris to flow into the sewers as well as larger graded areas similar to where the party had entered. After several hundred feet, the party came to a smaller tunnel off the main line. Cabe called for silence and leaned into the tunnel to listen with his enhanced half-elven bearing. I hear scuffling. Could be the dog, he whispered to the others. The large ranger nodded to proceed and the group made their way down into the narrower tunnel in a two by two by one formation. With all the ladies sandwiched in the middle and Welby, the halfling, bringing up the rear. The shadows from the torch danced along the wall and the party reached the end of the tunnel which deposited them in a large 30 by 20 foot chamber filled with all manner of broken furniture, tattered rugs, and other household items. A quartet of dirty children huddled together in the corner and in front of them stood a man brandishing a broken broomstick with a sharp point on it. We got nothing for you! Get out! Leave us be! yelled the man. Stunned, the group stopped in their tracks. Cabe stepped up and bowed politely and gingerly touched the tip of the makeshift spear, pushing it down. Raising his hands, he pointed out that the group meant no harm and they were just looking for something. The man again brandished his crude but deadly weapon. I told you, we got nothing. Go! Get away! We don't need you bonkers around here. Mystified at the sight ahead of them, the group piled into the room, causing the man to backtrack a few steps and shake his weapon in fear. Children in the corner backed away deeper. Lady Irena raised her hands and made her way around the man. Kneeling down, she assured the children that they were not going to be harmed. She turned back towards Welby and snapped her fingers. Fruit! I know you still have some. The diminutive halfling scoured his pockets and produced a handful of grapes and two apples. Slowly walking to the mage, he handed over the items before returning to the group. What are bonkers? asked Sister Elaine. The reply from the man was that bonkers were members of a bandit gang that quote-unquote own the sewers and terrorize homeless. There are more of you? queried Welby. I don't have any more fruit. After dispensing the food to the children, Lady Irena returned to the group and prepared to leave. As the group filed out, the man asked why the adventurers were in the sewers to begin with. Cabe told the man that they were searching for a lost dog with a collar on it. A horrified look crossed the man's face, and Cabe turned to notice a small fire pit with a small canine on the spit over a fire with a collar lying next to it. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. 
For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.